Okay, in this video, I'm going to fire up the Magnavox HD streaming player for the very first time and take you through a walkthrough on the user interface on the device. the device plugged into my television set with an HDMI cord and I'm going to plug in the device for the very first time so you'll see it as I see it. All right it says please wait. Okay it says welcome this unit is ready for initialization now. Set the language and network settings. Please follow instructions to make correct settings. Then the settings are initialized. So I'm just going to hit OK on the remote here. And of course I'm speaking English. And so far the remote seems pretty responsive. Let's go down to Next. Auto Update Check. Would you like to set on the Auto Software Update feature? When connected to the internet, the unit will automatically check for the latest software. Right now it's set to Off. I do want to set that to On. So I'll click OK on the On selection there and go down to Next here. The next section here is Wireless. You can do a Network List, an Easy Connect through WPS, a Manual Connect, or through IP Settings. I'm going to click on Network List and I'm going to sign into my home wireless network and I will join you when I'm done with that. Okay, I signed into my home wireless network, and the next selection here is software update. Would you like to check for a software update? Of course I would, so I'm going to click on yes. And it just so happens that there is a software update. It says, there is a software update available which provides the following updates. It is recommended that you update the player software to this new version. Of course, I'm going to press OK. And it's downloading. Okay, it's downloaded and now it's doing the update. So far, not a long experience, pretty painless, pretty quick. Okay, the update's completed. It says update result, update via network finished successfully, and I have to click OK to continue. And now the player is going to restart. Okay, it's fired up, and this is the user interface. It looks pretty simple. The first one is NetApp. The second one is settings, and the third one is network setup. I'm already connected to my home wireless network, so I don't have to go to network setup, but it is accessible if you do want to change the information there. Let's see what's in settings. You can change the video resolution, the TV aspect ratio, and the color. I have it pretty much all on auto here. You have audio here. And I do have this set up with a 5.1 Dolby digital receiver, so pretty much everything's on auto there. You have your system information here, and then after that you have network setup and product info. Let's hit the return button on the remote. And the one thing I do like about this so far is that it's very responsive. Let's go over to NetApp. And we get a dialog box right out of the gate that says Blockbuster. Due to a request from service provider, this service is no longer available. For more details, please contact service provider. I heard about this a while back. Blockbuster was pulling support off of these network streaming boxes. And that's really not a good idea. They should have their service available in as many places as possible. It's something that Netflix has done, and it proved to be a smart move on their part. But let's click through this. And let's see what we have here. We have Netflix, YouTube, Voodoo HD Movies, Hulu Plus, Film Fresh, Picasa, Voodoo Apps, and Pandora Internet Radio. Let's click on Netflix and see what the Netflix interface is on this device. Okay, so here is the Netflix interface, a little bit different from some of the modern Netflix interfaces. But I have used this interface before and I do like it. If I'm not mistaken, this is the original interface Netflix had on Google TV. Let's back out of that. And let's go back into NetApp here and go over to YouTube. 
Okay, this is what the YouTube interface looks like on here. I actually like the way it looks. You have a selection on the left-hand side to discover channels, to search, to go to my YouTube, and to check featured videos. Let me click on my YouTube and sign in. Okay, I linked my YouTube account to this device and I can scroll through here and let's go to my uploads here and it should start playing something. Hopefully it's not too loud. Okay, in this video I'm going to do an unboxing of the D-Link Movie Night streaming media player. The quality of now, the video is very good, all, very clear. A lot of videos up on these little streaming media devices. And I'm pretty impressed by it like, so far. And I like to try them out. And this is my latest one. Let me hit now, pause. And you have full control over it, whether you want to pause, play, fast forward, rewind. Let's uh, check the fast forward here. And it has to buffer up, but if you look at that red line there, that's what I can fast forward. And then the buffering is the light gray behind it. It's 802.11 B, G, and N certified. Okay, apparently there's no backing out of this. Let me hit Net App button on the remote here. It'll probably bring me back to the main menu. There we go. It would be a little bit nicer if I could hit the return button here and it would back me out. Normally if I do hit this return button it backs me out. But uh, when I was playing the video on YouTube there, it really I couldn't get back to the YouTube interface. So I have to go back to the Net app and then go back into YouTube. And uh, a little bit cumbersome. As I mentioned before, you can discover channels or you can search. So let me click on the search and just see what the how it works. Okay, you have your alphanumerics on the left-hand side. You type them in using the directional on the remote, and then you can look things up. Obviously, there's no keyboard on this remote, so that's how it's done. It's a little bit more cumbersome than actually having a keyboard, but that's pretty much what you expect when you have a device like this. I'm going to hit return and see if it does anything. Again, there's no backing out a level, so I just have to hit either the Net App button or actually let's hit the Home button up top here and let's see what happens. Okay, just as I expected, this is your home screen. I'm going to hit the Net App and let's go into Voodoo HD Movies. And this is the Voodoo interface that's pretty much universal on all of these streaming devices. Now you have to have an account. They actually give you a free trial where you can get a free $5.99 credit, which should give you one or two movies to watch. I'm going to hit the Browse button over here and just show you what the interface looks like. You have what's new here. You have the Browse tab, Collections, My Voodoo, and Search. And Voodoo's nice because it allows you to get access to the newer movies. Unlike Netflix, it is a pay-per-view model. So let's just look over here on Chronicle. And you can rent it or actually buy it. So if you wanted to rent it in the highest quality, which is HDX, it's $5.99. If you want to buy it, it's $22.99. If you get it in SD, it's $3.99 to rent and $17.99 to own. I'm going to go back to the Net App area and we're going to check out the next selection. The next one is Hulu Plus. Now I do use Hulu, but I don't use Hulu Plus. The first one is Hulu Walkthrough. What's the next one here? The Morning After. The Morning After, I guess these are shows. Of course, The Office, I'm familiar. Desperate Housewives. And these are all excerpts. This one's actually an episode of Naruto. And what's this? You get a full season episode here. So there's a mixture of clips and episodes just like you'd expect from Hulu. Let's go back to NetApp here. Now the next selection here is FilmFresh, and I'm not too familiar with FilmFresh, so let's click on that and see what it entails. FilmFresh. Movies, TV shows, search all. 
Well, let's click on movies and see what they offer here. New arrivals. I'm not really familiar with any of these. Albert Nobbs, one for the money. Okay, I'm actually on the top part here of the menu. Let me dive down here. One for the money. Okay, these are rentals or purchase. So you can rent them for $3.99 or buy them for $19.95. The next selection here is Mature. Then you have Adventure. And let's see what else we have. Action. So you have the full range of different movie genres here. Let's back it out of here and see what they have for TV shows. These are the most popular here. And let's see what an episode would cost of something that I've actually heard of. Not a big Mad Men fan, but let's just click on here and see. And you can buy the episodes for $1.99. That's pretty much the standard price. Back out of this. And let's go back to the NetApp menu. The next selection is Picasa. I don't have a Picasa account. It says to use the Picasa app, a Gmail account is required. If you have an email account with another email provider, you will need to create an additional account with Gmail in order to use this app. I have several Gmail accounts. I do not have a Picasa account. So let's just see how far I can get into this process without actually having to sign up for a Picasa account. And this is probably where it's going to stop me here. It says, please sign into your Picasa account. As I mentioned, I don't have one. But if you do, you'd be able to bring your Picasa pictures up on your television screen here. So let's just back out of this. And let's go to Voodoo Apps. Okay, I've gone through these apps before on a previous device, probably the Netgear device. But uh, as you can see here, you have a whole host of different apps that are hosted by Voodoo. You have Voodoo Movies, which I went through just a couple of minutes ago. You have Facebook, Nightly News, Weather, Today Show, Discovery Channel, Picasa, Flickr, True Blood. Now, don't get too excited. Things like True Blood on the Voodoo apps, they're only clips or extras not the actual television show. X-Play, Nova, Dolby Digital Plus, National Lampoon, Rachel Maddow Show, The New York Times, UVTV, Twitter, Dexter, Delicious TV, Hidden Universe, TED Talks, Daily Motion, Stock Tracker, CNBC, Dive Film HD, Motors, MSNBC Morning Joe, Scam School, CNN Daily, Big Love, Californication, Attack of the Show, AC360, Hung, Texilla, XLR, 8R, or probably Accelerator, From the Top at Carnegie Hall, Scene Stealers, Entourage, Best of Revision 3, Meet the Press, CNN Now in the News, System, Fast Draw, Hack 5, ESPN Around the Horn, Philharmonia, Orchestra, Zeitgeist, Bored to Death, Pixel Perfect, Curb Your Enthusiasm, iFanboy, Totally Rad Show, Indie Film Nation, Good Housekeeping, Dignation, Rocket Boom, Flight of the Concords, Face the Nation, Princeton University, CNN Student News, CNN In Case You Missed It, The Screening Room, London Landscape TV, Slate V, ESPN Mike and Mike Moment, The Dig Reel, The City Concealed, Monocle, Amanpour, New York on the Clock, New Yorker, Animated Cartoons, White House Weekly Address, Walt Mossberg, Personal Tech, Irrelevant Astronomy, Katie Couric's Notebook, Washington Post Photo Stories, Bill Moyer's Journal, Washington Post HD Podcast, and Andy Jordan's Tech Diary. So that's pretty much all of the Voodoo apps here and you can filter them by most popular, newest, browse by genre, or info and settings. Let's go back to NetApp here. And I think that's pretty much everything. No, we have Pandora. So let's go over to Pandora. I don't use Pandora, but let's see what the interface is on this device for those of you who are interested and do use Pandora. As I said, I am not a Pandora member, but this device does offer it in case you're interested. Let me exit out of here, 
And that is the Magnavox streaming player. I like the remote. It feels good in my hands. It's very responsive. One of the drawbacks on the D-Link Movie Night streaming player is that the remote isn't always very responsive. I do, however, prefer the D-Link Movie Night streaming player's interface to this Magnavox interface. The Magnavox streaming player interface, as you can see, is very basic. But the important thing is that it does what you want it to do. But so far, I'm impressed with the YouTube streaming. The quality was good, and I liked the interface. Also, I briefly checked out the Netflix streaming on the device, and I can say that it is of a good quality. Definitely on par with the other streamers out there. So, so far, so good. I'm going to be using this device as my main streamer for a while, just to try it out. And I'll update you with more information if there's anything more to tell you about this device. So that pretty much does it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. As always, if you like what you see, please subscribe. And if you want to help out my channel, give me a thumbs up or favorite this video. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.